Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guy. It's a phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week, we're talking about Season 4, Episode 10, titled Love at First Sight. It originally premiered on January 15th, 1988. Hello, 1988. (laughs) (laughs) It is written by Peter McCabe, who has two more episodes coming, and he is also the story editor for the entire season of season five. Oh, he's around for a while. Well, I don't know if that's a glowing (laughs) review for season five or not. (laughs) It is directed. I like this episode. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I'm I'm with you on that, John. I kind of like this one. Like we're it's like it's just like last week. We're we're getting better. We're running faster. It We're getting true. close to a sprint. Cows of October's coming. So, <laughs> <laughs> both literally and figuratively. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> <laughs> the director is Don Johnson. Oh, it, yeah, okay. So, be, for being a Don Johnson episode, I do like this one a lot better than his previous episode. Yes, because he also directed... Back in the World and By Hook or By Crook. Which is not a bad one. No, and also in Back in the World, uh, or is it By Hook or By Crook? I can't remember which one now has Iman in it. It's uh, Back in the World. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, he has a cast he likes to it's use. Back in the World. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Starting to get used to the Don uh, Johnson regulars. <laughs> All right, John, we got a little bit of new, a little bit of old, more Sheena Easton. I roll. <laughs> what else you got for us this week, John? Well, let's just start with Sheena Easton because she basically sang, sang the exact same song that she sang basically two episodes ago. She sang I Got You, Babe, which is a cover of Cher's song. And why they picked that, you know. Melissa was saying while we were watching it is that it, it might have something to do with that she was able to act in it, but the record label forbid her from having her music in the episode. Yeah, because she's not doing any of her known music, her popular music, which you think, but it might might have been that she had like a record coming out and they're like, no, we don't want you to put it on that show. You can be on there, but don't use her music. So she had to come up with something okay. to use. Okay, that's really weird because here's the fact I'm going to throw out before we move on. Miami Vice was basically one of the first five acting roles she had. Out of her first five acting roles, four of which she played cameos of herself, Vice was the only one that she actually played a different character who just happened to be a pop star modeled after herself. Hmm, interesting. Vice, literally, out of the first five acting cameos that she had, was the only one where she didn't actually play Sheena Easton. She played a (laughs) Sheena Easton-like person. (laughs) Oh, <laughs> way one of those cameos in the show Alf. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I have not watched an Alf episode in a very long time, but as far as I remember, Alf never left the house. So did they just have Sheena Easton and like invite her over for brunch? Like, how did she show up at their doorstep? No, he did used to go out. He did. He okay. I I'm kind of an Alf expert. We watched it like <laughs> I watched it with the kids like three years ago or something. The whole thing. He did sometimes go out for once. For example, he started doing like a dating, dating on by the phone, and he met, <laughs> and he met this girl, and she was blind. And that might be that episode that I'm thinking of. She was blind, and he met her. At, oh. He went to her door to give her flowers, and he was like, you know, she was like, oh, I, I really like you. Hey, I want to date you. Based on voice only, I would date Alf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he did uh, leave the curious. house sometimes. Did, did, yeah. he, did he wear a disguise? Because like, uh, from my uh, what I remember is is him always being at the house. I don't remember him ever leaving. Yeah. Yeah, so. I mean, there, it was very few times he got out of the house, but yeah, but the, he did. Okay, all right. Alpha side, let's move on. Sheena Easton, thank you for showing up in our music. Now, we're going to talk about the song Ball of Confusion by Love and Rocket. Love and Rocket, whose first appearance was in the episode God's Work. We've already seen Rockets before. They're an English band founded in 85 by three former members of the band Bowhouse. I'm going to talk a little bit about each of the members pre- and pretty much what they did after the band. John Haskins, who was the bassist and vocalist, uh, he also wrote books and plays. His plays included Anarchy and the Gold Street Wimpy, 
and the Chateau and the Devil's Muse, which he also directed, mm. uh, among others. And then he also wrote a book called Who Killed the Moonlight and popped up in 2016's on charts with a single called The Day That David Bowie Died. Mm. Obviously, in homage to David Bowie. Once again, David Bowie showing up in our music. <laughs> he would also appear on albums for Jane's Addiction and Porno for Pyros. So, on a side note, the lead singer of Jane's Addiction, his side project was Porno for Pyros. Pretty much Haskins, man. He was like the most established, uh, uh, the most successful member. He also regularly displays art at galleries and is a resident DJ at several Hollywood hotspots. The other two members, so Kevin Haskins, the drummer, aside from his music career, he composed scores for movies, TV, and video games under the name Messi. <laughs> Some of so are some of those movies? Well, the most recent movies were The Crow 3 and What Lies Beneath. Uh, that's a Harrison Ford movie. He also composed for NBC's Third Watch. Uh, and then advertisements, PlayStation 2 and Skechers, as well as <laughs> video games, Unreal Tournament. So finally, we have David Ash. David Ash was the guitarist and pretty much the lead singer. He's pretty much all about Bo House and Love and Rockets and the music man. Uh, <laughs> by far, has the best fit. Uh, had the best hair in the band, so uh, we can give him that. <laughs> We're gonna move on from there, and before we get to the uh, the main event, we'll talk about the Ward Brothers, whose song "Madness of All uh, of It All" was in the episode. They are a British pop rock band made famous by their 1986 single "Cross That Bridge." They actually only released two albums. And and pretty much because Cross That Bridge was dang successful that ever charted. Two albums were pretty much critical failures. Oh, so, I mean, they released a number of other singles. None of them ever got even close to the song Cross That Bridge. The band itself made up of Dave, Derek, and Graham Ward. Now, I believe they're brothers. They're possibly brothers. I noticed that their Wikipedia does not specifically note them to be brothers. <laughs> I also found every single bio I could find on the Ward Brothers uh, was basically just a rip off of their Wikipedia. So we have no idea. Maybe they're not <laughs> brothers. Maybe they all just have the same last name. <laughs> Who knows? One of them could be different race or <laughs> 20 years older. We have no idea. Maybe they could be. Who knows? Maybe they went to the same high school and say, and had the same last name at the exact same time and then started a band <laughs> together. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe Dave is Derek's cousin and Graham is Derek's dad, <laughs> which would make him Dave's <laughs> doesn't really matter. They split up in 1988. This song, Madness of It All, actually appeared in the 86 movie The American Way as well. Uh, and then their song, Why Do You Run, popped up in the 87 film Stakeout. Mm. And then a decade later, in 1996, they would show up out of nowhere with the new album, Wave Goodbye to Grandma. <laughs> it would be a commercial fair. Surprise. And the band's final release to date. Mm. Wave goodbye to Grail. No love That's for never Grandma. Work out. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get to Looking for Someone Love by the Stray Cats. Now, I actually like the Stray Cats and uh, didn't know as much about them going into this. They are a U.S. rockabilly band formed in 1979. They were formed by guitarist and vocalist Brian Setzer, double mm. bassist Lee Rocker, and drummer Slim Jim Phantom. <laughs> <laughs> now, John, whenever I think of the Stray Cats, I listen to any of their music, I immediately think it's a secret meaning about the life of, of cats. That every <laughs> song is about a cat. No, it's not, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Including this song. <laughs> It's just a lonely cat looking for so, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably not far off. They're from originally from Long Island. They were made popular by songs including Stray Cat Strut, Rock This Town, and uh, Look at That Cadillac. See? In fact, Rock This Town is in the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The most One of the songs that shaped rock and roll. See? See? You can interpret every one of their songs. It's about... A cat. <laughs> Look at that Cadillac. 
Yeah. Straight cat Strut strut. It. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, they were heavily influenced by 50s artists Eddie Cochran, Carl Perkins, and the Bill Haley and his comets. They developed following in New York by frequently playing the, the famous venue CBGB and Max's Kansas City. They moved to the UK, though, after hearing about a revival of 50s Teddy Boy subculture in England. Now, let's get back to this whole catch thing. <laughs> their first appearance in 79, uh, their first appearance in 1979 was under a number of different names. That included the Tomcats, the Teds, and Brian and the Tomcats. See? They've All been cats. the stray cats ever since, uh, like since cats. 83. Yeah, see, All cats. Ted. Ted would be a great cat name, by the way. Yeah. Like, see? Yeah, see, it's all would... about cats. Everything is cats. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Inside the drum. Cats. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> Mid-1980s, while they were being courted by some record companies, members of some pretty big bands started popping up at their shows. Members of the Rolling Stones, Ed Zeppelin, and The Who would just start showing up. Like, like people were, were digging their music so much. So their self-debut album in 1981 would feature three of their biggest hits, Rock This Town, Stray Catch, and The Runaway Boys. Their next album wouldn't actually see much success, but then they would release two more albums after that that would all that would all both chart. By 1984, musical and personal conflicts began to mount in the band, plus the fact that, you know, the band was starting to branch out and do other things. So Slim Jim Phantom had mar- had gotten married to Brack actress Britt Eklund. Setzer was making guest appearances with other artists like Bob Dylan and Stevie Nicks. He was also hired as a concert guitarist for Robert Plant's side project, The Honey Drippers. What she knew was going to chord in LA. <laughs> band would also add former BMT guitarist Tommy Burns. They would do a Euro- European and then a US tour. And their last show would be at the New Orleans World Fair, in which they would just call it quits. And actually, talking about it in 12, Setzer actually said that, you know, it was silly to break up the Stray Cats at the peak of their success, but that's pretty much what they did. So after they broke up, Rocker and Phantom would form a trio, Phantom, Rocker, and Slick, with Slick being former David Bowie guitarist Earl Slick. Damn it, David <laughs> Bowie, get out of my music. Snuck in there. <laughs> I, I, have, I had my fingers crossed you were going to say it was Slick Rick. <laughs> Damn. Setzer would actually continue to work with Burns, but he would start doing solo work and eventually a project called the Brian Setzer Orchestra. Over the years, they would have many reunions and released many albums three or four times through the 90s and in the 2000s. They would get together, they would do a quick tour, release an album, and then break up again. Lastly, I'm going to talk about strange connections to the Stray Cats. Setzer was also the executive producer on the Drake Bell album Ready Steady Go on Surf Dog uh, Records 2014. Damn. Drake Bell, you might also know from Nickelodeon's The Amanda Show and Drake and Josh. (laughs) Also voices a voice on the Fairly Odd Parents trilogy, TV movie trilogy. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so lead rocker by the way he is the son of classical clarinetists stanley and naomi drucker who played in the uh, new york philharmonic for years and his sister roseanne is a country singer so mm. um, must not be a famous country singer because there was no link to any other wikis <laughs> Also, we know the flute oh. is metal, but we know that the clarinet cannot. Well, Lee Rucker plays the double bass. Um, <laughs> he didn't take after his the clarinetists. In fact, he went against them. They probably don't even speak to him anymore. <laughs> and then Phantom's most recent projects include the trio Men Walking, which features Kurt Brandon, Mike Peters, and Captain Sensible. <laughs> was a name you guys might recognize. Yes. <laughs> which I also want to point out that if you include Slim Jim Phantom, that is not a trio. That is a quintet. <laughs> <laughs> that aside, he was also in a band called The Head Cat. And he was in that band with Lemmy until he died. Mm. Once again, more cats. <laughs> <a> little Lemmy. <laughs> 
Fishy <laughs> music. John, of course, this took a turn at the end here. Now, <laughs> things I wasn't prepared for. But you will never be able to convince me that this, all of the straight cast music is not about the weird straight cats <laughs> around their apartment. <laughs> you know those cats have the weird eye stuff going on. One eye's closed. Honestly, honestly think you're right. In fact, I think one of them must have thought he was actually a cat. And that's who wrote all the songs. <laughs> that's probably why they broke up. They were probably like, we gotta get away from we gotta, we gotta get away from Phantom. All he wants to write about is cats. <laughs> well, let's go give our final thoughts on this episode. I think I think we're feeling good now. Everything's going good. Okay. All right. I'm getting my feet underneath me. We're doing all right. Let's go give our final thoughts on this episode. And that's gonna do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Go with the Heat. We would love to hear from you. Email us, go with the heat at gmail.com. Get us on Twitter at go with the heat. Get us on Instagram at go with the heat. Get us on Facebook, facebook.com slash go with the heat. Guess what? Anchor.fm, Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play, YouTube. You can find us at all of those locations at go with the heat. Check out the website, go with the heat.com. You can find links to all of that stuff, all of the feeds, including the music only feed, the feed for just the This Week in Vice. You can find everything you need for, for the website, including how to contact us right there on that website. That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you all next time. Bye, pals.